Good afternoon, this is the Ranger with the Sylvia V3 and the Rocky Grinder. I'm going to be doing this video just to kind of go over the condition as well as make a latte on this. Um, so as you've seen from the photos, it's in pretty decent shape. Uh, not the best, it's not as new, but it's certainly not too bad, especially for the age. Um, so the main wear and tear that I see here is obviously scratches around the cup tray, the uh, drip tray. That's where you get your cups in and out, your porta filter sometimes hits and gives the machine a nick or two, uh, but it's not too bad. Um, and there's a little bit of bubbling on this paint, um, which is a pretty common thing. Um, and this part is about $50, $70 to replace, so it's pretty easy and cheap to do. Uh, it's just cosmetic though, it doesn't affect anything. Um, and all around there's not many uh, things to mention, not, not too many dings or scratches actually. Um, so the machine at the moment is uh, it's warmed up um, and usually it takes about five minutes to sort of boot up and reach temperature. So let's do that now. Just turn it on at the wall. This button is up for on, down for off. And uh, when the light is on, that means the boiler is heating. When the light is not on, then that means it's up to temperature. So it is up to temperature. So if we turn it to steam mode, it will start heating up, but it's up to temperature now. So the temperature goes around, I think, uh, between 95 and 85 in that range. Um, it does go up and down and you can install a temperature um, device to control this, or you can just do it the manual way um, if, you're, if you're very picky about your coffee temperatures. Anyway, so the machine is in standby mode, as is the grinder. There's a button here to turn it on and the button here engages the actual motor. So this machine has just been serviced and cleaned. It's um, ready to go, actually. So um, I've given it a check up, a look. It's very clean now, uh, and the cleaning cycle, of course. Uh, and I've just actually replaced the grip head seal as we spoke. The old one is here. It was actually quite brittle, so I, I insisted on changing it. Uh, it's definitely due. <laughs> um, but yeah, enough talking. So the machine is uh, up to temperature, but what I like to do just before my coffees, um, I like to run a blank shot. So that's a shot of hot water without any coffee in the handle, just to warm things up some more, warm up the porta filter, the head, and even your cup, if you wish. So I've got a small espresso mug here. I won't be steaming any milk today, actually. Um, I'll be showing you how to do it. So here is my cup. Blank shot is just 10 20 seconds of the coffee button. Should be enough. So, um, just a quick run around around the machine, uh, walk through around the machine. So obviously the on-off button is here, heating element uh, indicator. This is your coffee button. Obviously, as you saw, it will dispense hot water through the grip head and the handle. This is the hot water tap button. It will pump water through the um, steam steam oil. This is quite important uh, for, for a couple of reasons. I'll let you know soon. Um, this is the steaming button. So if you turn this on, this, this, the machine will start heating up the boiler and boil water for you to steam the, your milk. Um, and obviously the steam on dial, this is for steam and for hot water, so it'll do both. Um, oh, a water tank here with a lid, obviously. Uh, with a water tank, the only way to know if it's full or not is just to open and look. Um, and I recommend you keep it at least halfway full, uh, just to be safe. Uh, don't let it go too close to the end. Um, and there's two tubes that um, go into the tank. So the long one is the one that sucks the water out. That's the one you want to. That's the one that you want to keep at the bottom of the water tank. And the second one is actually a overpressure, um, an overpressure line. So in case you overpressurize the machine, all the excess water will go from the pump to the tank. Okay, so the tank is about halfway full now. Should be enough for the video. Um, yeah, so the cup is now nice and hot. 
A few things I, I want to tell you about this machine. A few very uh, about three very important things. Firstly, you want to always, as we spoke, you want to keep the hot water. But you want to keep the tank for um, uh, at least halfway full. If you forget to fill it for any reason, then you turn on the machine and the boiler is actually empty. That's not very good for the boiler, and it can actually burn out. Um, and it's very common where people um, forget to fill the machine. They turn on the boiler for steaming. Uh, the boiler goes. 140 degrees Celsius dry uh, and the heating element actually um, burns out and that requires a whole boiler replacement not very good um, so just to avoid that you can do two things firstly keep the obviously the water tank full but even better is just to check every morning or every time you use the machine just to check that it has hot water in the boiler oh sorry just to check that the boiler is full um, turn on the hot, the hot water tap so you can do this um, on the hot water tap, or you can even run hot water through the head. If the hot water, is, if, if water is running through the machine, that means the boiler has some water. Um, if you, for example, if you steam for too long, for say, a minute, two minutes, um, more than one cup of uh, coffee, if you steam for too long, the, obviously the, the, the boiler will get emptier and emptier, and the machine won't fill unless you make another cup of coffee or manually fill it. With a with the hot water tap, so I recommend just running hot water through the hot water tap because this means this will indicate to you that the machine the, the boiler is almost full because the um, the line for the hot water tap is actually higher in the actual boiler, so it indicates to you that it's quite full. If I ever if I ever turn this on, turn on this and. Um, there's no water. I'll keep running it until I see hot water. Uh, when I start seeing hot water coming out, I'm happy that there's water in there. Um, so that's number one. Try, try not to burn the <laughs> the heating element. So keep your machine nice and full of water. And number two, try to keep it dry. Um, and that's not only um, by like wiping um, wiping hot wa wiping water every time you see it, uh, but also making sure you don't keep the drip tray full. Uh, if the drip tray goes more than 75% full, it'll actually start dripping uh, when you try to remove it. So, um, quite an annoying thing about Renchilia machines of this sort is that the drip tray is quite shallow. So it does, obviously you can remove and empty and wash it, etc, etc. Uh, but it's not very deep, so try, and not, try to keep it half full or less. Um, the, the more you empty it, the better, honestly. So it's... Got some water now, I'm going to empty it just to be safe. Uh, and as you see, there's a lip here, so when, when it's full, like completely full to the brim, and you remove it, you'll actually start spilling hot water onto the base of the machine. Over time, if you do that way too often, it'll start rusting and um, kind of uh, compromising the integrity of the metal. So try to keep it nice and dry. Uh, so this one does have a little bit of rust. I mean, as you can imagine, it's quite a few years old now, but it's not too bad to the point where it's breaking off. So, take care of the machine, it'll take care of you. Uh, that's the motto. Okay, I've been talking for too long. Let's actually make the espresso, not the latte. Let's make espresso now. Uh, the grinder is um, at number six at the moment, zero being the absolute finest. I wouldn't recommend you go below five, honestly. Um, it's just talcum powder below five. So. Espresso, I would say five to 15, five to 10. Different machines, will have, different beans will have different uh, numbers, I guess. Uh, and these beans are quite old now, but they still do make a decent espresso. All right. Um, oh, yeah, yeah maintenance-wise, try to do the back flush every few months, every three months maybe. Um, and replace the grip head seal once or twice, once a year or every other year. Uh, as you saw, if you keep it unchanged for too long, it'll become brittle and actually a pain in the ass to remove. Okay. Um... I have a scale here, um, and it will help me with dosing. This is a double basket, that's the, the one that the machine comes with, that's the one that you see in the cafes, so it's a standard. You can get bigger or smaller baskets, if you like different strengths of coffee, I guess. This is the standard one. It takes about 14 grams of coffee, maybe 15. Um, and I've got the scale here just to confirm that I have the right dose. There is a line on the, on the, on the basket here that you should fill it to. So if I fill it more than this line, it would be too much coffee, less than the line, too little coffee. 
uh, I think that's simple enough. Um, so my scale here will ensure that I have consistent copies every time and I have the right dose. So I'm going to zero it and the grinder obviously has a port filter holder here. You can remove this if you want to uh, grind into a larger container. For example, if you like French press coffee or drip, you can increase the grind size, grind into a big container, then take it back to espresso, which is number six here, and uh, put back the port filter handle, port filter holder. Uh, I'm going to press this trigger to grind. If you want to change the grind size, you click this and then you turn the actual bean hopper. Quite simple. So you can shake it around, stop it halfway just to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Uh, let's see. Um, nine grams, a bit more. Like you don't really need a scale to make good coffees. I just find it much easier if you get one of the variables out, which is the coffee amount, and focus on the grind size and the tamping and other factors. Okay. Like, I'm not a barista. I don't have a certificate in coffee making. Uh, but I really like coffee, and um, over time you get used to it. Like, you get used to tamping and improving your technique. So. There's, there is a little bit of a learning curve, I have to say. This is not an automatic machine after all, but it will deliver coffee that's the same or even better than cafe machines. So, that's a plus. So, go 15 grams. All right, let's, let's roll with that. Um, pushing the basket to its limits. Here's the tamper that it comes with. It's a nice standard tamper. I'm going to press it down firmly, make sure there's no gaps, make sure the coffee is distributed evenly before even I press it actually. So make sure you spread the coffee with your fingers, with your palm, wherever, wherever, whatever it is. Okay, so you can barely see the line here, but it's just on the line. So 15 grams is just on the line, anymore it will start choking the machine. So I'm going to press it down firmly, clean the edges. Um, you can even follow the line on the tamper. It's a, it's a good indicator of having the right dose. Yeah, okay. Um, group, group head seal is nice and fresh, so it'll be a, a bit soft. Try to keep the port filter handle at at least 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. If you keep it on the left, so, sorry, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock. If you keep it on the left, so at, say, 6.30, 7 o'clock, um, you might drip around the seal, obviously, because you're not putting enough pressure on the seal. So, nice and, nice and tight at 6 o'clock or even 5 o'clock. Um, in this case, I've put maybe a little bit too much coffee, so it might give me trouble. Because uh, obviously, more coffee means um, uh, it's higher, and then when you squeeze it, it's harder to squeeze into the, into the machine. But let's see, let's see how we go. Uh, nice and tight. My espresso cup here. I'm just gonna put the hot water down the sink. Uh, I'm gonna use the scale once more just to measure the actual espresso mass. So, as you saw, 15, 15 grams of ground coffee that's the input for the output. I want to double that. Uh, that's a, like a rule of thumb that everyone uses. You don't have to follow it, but it's a good rule of thumb to follow if you want to get decent coffees, I guess. Um, so yeah, here's my cup. If you want to add your sugar, your sweetener, your syrup, do it at this stage. Um, and I'm gonna uh, keep an eye on two things. So the speed of the of the coffee coming out and the consistency. I want it to be nice and smooth, almost like warm honey. Um, and when, when I turn on the pump, I'm gonna wait and see how long it, it'll take to start dripping out of the spouts. And number two, uh, how long it'll take to reach my designated amount so what's <clears throat> 15 times 2 is 30 grams so 30 grams is around here like maybe a third or halfway through the cut through this glass it should be about 30 grams and if you have a scale that will be easier to gauge 
if you don't have scale, I guess you can just use your senses and figure out what 30 milliliters is. So that's uh, what I'm going to keep an eye on. Boom. It is a touch quicker than I usually like it. I guess it's because of, of the beans are quite old. That's 15 seconds. Yeah, it is a touch quick. Um, it's 35 grams. Yeah, um, so 35 and 15 seconds, yeah, that's a little bit quick. Uh, it should be a bit slower, and I guess it's because of the age of the beans. I wouldn't, um, I would try my best to use fresh beans. So try to avoid supermarket beans or really old beans that have been sitting on the shelf for a long time. Try to get freshly roasted from your cafe or roasters, or try to opt for one of the cheap, good beans. So I would recommend Aldi. Um, there's, there's a lot of other brands as well, but Aldi is quite cheap and it's fairly fresh because they roast it in Melbourne actually. So, um, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, nearing 20 minutes that's my espresso shot as you see it was nice and smooth at the beginning but it got a little bit quicker towards the end here i've got um good crema good body you may want to mix it up um but i'm not too um, fast i don't usually have espresso i have lattes most of the time but for the sake of the video i I don't think I'm gonna have time to do milk. So I'm just gonna take you to steaming straight away. Or well, before that, I'm just gonna tell you, give you one more tip. So here's my knock box. You may wanna invest in a knock box if you don't have one, it'll make life easier with dispensing, uh, uh, discarding the old coffee. Um, I like to clean the, the head and the portrait with a blank shot just to keep things fresh. You don't, you don't want the coffee and the oils sitting on the machine and the handle for too long. So just run hot water, not a lot, just a little bit to get things cleaner. And that does it. Perfect. Um, yeah, so that's clean and uh, you can stay here until the next morning. Uh, with steam, you just turn on the steam switch, you give it about a minute, two minutes for the light to go off. When it goes off, then that means it's ready to steam. Steam is really crazy on this machine, it's really, really powerful. It's one of the most powerful, especially on an entry level machine like this. Um, so yeah, you will need to practice your milk technique quite, uh, um, quite a lot on this machine, for the first few days at least if you haven't used the machine before. Um, and I'm gonna take this opportunity to empty the drip tray because we have put in a lot of water into it. So take the top grill. So yeah, the machine does have a three-way solenoid, which is a feature on, one, on the better machines out there. Uh, it's a feature that gets rid of the excess pressure after your shot. Gets rid of all the excess pressure from the porta filter into the tray. So that when you open the handle after your shot, the coffee doesn't explode and spread everywhere. Which on some machines it used to do that in the past. Yeah, so just waiting for steam to turn on. You may find it quicker and easier to actually steam your milk before your shot. Um, reason being, it's easier to cool down a boiler from steam to espresso temperature rather than waiting for it to heat from espresso to milk to, to steam. So, you're gonna wait, give, give, it, give it its time. So it's off now, it's ready to steam. Uh, what you want to do before, so I'm going to use, um, let's use this cup here. I'm going to turn it on just quickly to discard all the hot water that's built up because there will be hot water before you get steam. So I'm just going to get this hot water out because I don't want the hot water to be in my milk. And when I start getting steam, that's how I know it's ready to steam. 
uh, it's just ready for me to pour my milk, uh, bring my milk jug here and start steaming. So it's incredibly powerful steam. It can get out of control if you open it all the way. So you can actually only open it halfway if you opt to do that. So that you can get a more controlled uh, steaming process. Or if you're in a hurry, you can just open it all the way and let it do its thing. It's really, really loud, really, really powerful. I'm gonna close it now. And then I'm gonna turn off the steam. Uh, there are a few tricks on this machine you can search online on how to get the best coffee or how to best, how to um, make your workflow a bit smoother because you can, so say if you, if you do your milk before your espresso, you can um, start steaming the milk and, and then halfway through the steaming, you can actually turn off the boiler, as in turn off the steam mode and keep the wand open. Um, so that will... That will keep steaming, but if you want to save some time, if you do that, you will uh, cool down the boiler as it's steaming and finishing steaming, so that by the end of steaming, uh, it's closer to espresso temperature. And you can bring it closer to um, espresso temperature by turning on the hot water tap. I would turn on the hot water tap regardless after steaming, just to make sure that the boiler is full. As I told you, the machine will not pump water during steam mode, so it may run dry if you steam for too long and not fill the hot water, and not fill the boiler with the, the hot water. So, I'm gonna turn on the hot water tap and open the steam on. So now I've rid, I've rid the machine, turn it off, turn it off. So I've rid the machine of all the really super hot water and steam, so that now it's, it's number one, it's full and it's able to make an, another shot. Number two, it's down to, to, to the 90 degree um, temperature range for espresso. Uh, yeah, I hope it wasn't too overwhelming. It is a manual machine, but it's built like a tank. Um, you probably, if you haven't done your research on this, these things are built like a tank. Um, they last ages and ages. Um, and if you take care of them, they can easily do one, two decades um, without much maintenance, actually, without much trouble. Uh, yeah, but you will need to learn how to use it. You will need to make sure you don't run the boiler dry. Make sure you... Um, Keep it dry underneath as well to avoid rust and keep the water tank full because it doesn't have an indicator. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you'll get a lot of years out of this.